after looking at the conic sections, what we realize is that we have non-functions that are relationships between x and y that we use quite often. It would be nice if there was a better way to, to express those relationships that are not functions. And so what we're going to take a look at in the next couple sections is some different ways to express relationships between our variables. We're answering the question, is there a better way? To describe relations that are not functions. We're used to this whole xy relationship. And x determines y, and that's what allows us to graph our points and our function to represent uh, all the solutions. However, there might be another way to represent functions. What if instead of just having x dependent on y, what if x and y were both defined to be de dependent on another variable? And this is where we get what are called parametric equations. And the idea of a parametric equation is the x value comes from some function x of t, and the y value comes from some function y of t, where t now is the independent variable. And what's really important is that independent variable moves over an interval. In other words, we're graphing x and y with relationship to time. As time passes, we have this movement of our x and y values. And so the time can quickly determine the graph. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have a relationship where x of t is equal to 3t plus 2. Sometimes you just see x equals. And y of t is equal to t squared minus 1. And negative 3 is the lowest value for t. And 2 is the highest value for t. What if we wanted to graph this parametric equation? Well, what we can do is we can make a, value, a table of values for our t values going from negative 3 to 2. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And we can look at what happens to our x and y values so that we can graph what happens at each of these moments in time as the time progresses. So when t is negative 3, we plug negative 3 into the x equation. And so we end up with 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9, plus 2 is negative 7. Then we plug negative 3 into the y function. When we plug negative 3 into the y function, we get negative 3 squared, which is 9, minus 1 is 8. Then we plug the negative 2 in. 3 times negative 2 plus 2 is negative 4. Negative 2 squared minus 1 is 3. Plug in the negative 1 in. 3 times negative 1 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Minus 1 is 0. Plugging 0 in, we get 2 and negative 1. Plugging 1 in, we get 5 and 0. And plugging 2 in, we get 8 and 3. And so what this does is give us the coordinate points that we can graph to see our function. Popping up some graph paper to help us graph this. x starts at negative 7, comma 8. Then it's negative 4, 3. Then it's negative 1, 0. Then it's 2, negative 1. Then it's 5, 0. 
and then it's 8, 3. And what we end up with is this graph. Turns out what we have is the forming of a parabola. But what's really important to note is that the graph also has direction. And that's something that's unique about parametric curves, is you end up with direction to your graphs. So this is our function. x of t is 3t plus 2. y of t is t squared minus 1. Now, sometimes it might be useful to convert our parametric equation and eliminate the parameter. so that we can see the relationship between x and y a little more straightforward. And really, the way we can eliminate the parameter is we can solve one equation for the variable for the parameter t and substitute into the other function. So let's take a look at some examples. starting with x is equal to 2 plus 3 over t, and y is equal to t minus 1. What would this look like as a regular function? Well, the y equation is really easy to solve for t by adding 1 to both sides. And then we can take that y plus 1 and replace the t with that y plus 1. When we do, we end up with x equals 2 plus 3 over the y plus 1. And then we might want to solve this for y, because we're used to seeing functions solved for y. So if we subtract 2 from both sides, we can multiply both sides by y plus 1 and divide both sides by x minus 2 and subtract 1 from both sides to get y is equal to 3 over x minus 2 minus 1. And this would give us the exact same function, but with the parameter eliminated. Let's take a look at a little bit more of an interesting function. Let's look at the parametric equation x equals 4 plus 2 cosine of t and y equals negative 1 minus 3 sine of t. This is actually a very familiar graph to us. Let's see what happens when we work to solve it if it becomes something more familiar. We can start by working with the x equation. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides and then divide by 2. So we've solved for the cosine of t. And the same thing with the y. I'm going to solve it for the sine of t by adding 1 and dividing by negative 3. One way we could attack this is to take the cosine inverse and then plug it into the sine. That's going to be a lot more work than we need to do, though, because we know that sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t equals 1. So let's do that. We're going to take the sine of t, which is y plus 1 over negative 3 squared, plus the cosine of t, which is the x minus 4 over 2 squared, must equal 1. And if we put that squared on top and bottom, we end up with y plus 1 squared over 9 plus x minus 4 squared over 4 equals 1. And we should recognize that function. That is an ellipse that is centered at 4 comma negative 1 with a vertical major axis 
equal to, the square root of 9 is 3, double that at 6, and a horizontal minor axis equal to, the square root of 4 is 2, and double that, we get 4. So this is an ellipse centered at 4, negative 1, with a vertical major axis of 6 and a horizontal minor axis of 4. That is what the graph looks like. But what we've done, because this is a parametric equation, is x and y depend on t, the independent variable. Now the ellipse is defined as a function of t. This is one advantage of parametric equations, is we can start working with uh, non-functions and define them in terms of this parametric variable, this parameter, t. Today's assignment is designed to have you get familiar with parametric graphs and converting between parametric and rectangular coordinates with the x's and y's. Take a look at practicing those. And then in our next video, we'll look at how we can do calculus when we're working with parametric equations.